research uh, in my experience in, 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 my, in, in my career, and a lot of it's focused on access and equity issues, Latino student issues, first generation. Many of us in here were probably first generation students. I know I was myself. And, um, and the way that we like to talk about what uh, Jorge was talking about was basically decreased incarceration rates, uh, decreased health disparities, uh, um, and decreasing the um, uh, the or increasing rather the tax base uh, in our communities and when you st and it, that's high stakes in the U.S. in general but when you think about communities like the ones that w the one that we live in here where so many of our students are Latino and so many of us come from these families it's even it's almost uh, paramount right and and the efforts that we put into it and so many of you are familiar with this data um, that Jorge has shared with us he's disaggregated in ways that really allow us to kind of hone in and all of you are aware of this stuff. And so I want to reiterate that this isn't, this isn't an opportunity for us to say, hey, look, who's doing better or worse. This is an opportunity for us to kind of really dig into this data and say, hey, we've been doing really good things in San Antonio in the last you know, 20, 30 years. How do we get better? And so again, every chance I get to talk about this collective impact uh, idea that, that not only how do school districts help each other, but how do we, those of us that are in community-based organizations, that are in philanthropic groups, that are in the business, you know, having HEB give time to this effort, how do we help supplement and augment? And so in the philanthropic world, that's called collective impact, right? In the Latino community, we just call it familia, right? So, so that's what we're trying to get done. And so thank you again, Jorge, for, for sharing that data with us and going through that. What I'd like to do now is uh, allow each one of the districts uh, to come up and also share some data uh, with us as well. And so the first one I have coming up uh, is Harlandale Independent School District, and we will have Ray. Oh. Not Ray. <laughs> I was like, Ray. <laughs> we have Samantha Gallegos, <laughs> who will go over uh, the Harlandale Independent School District data with us. And um, one of the things that we'd like to say about Harlandale and that we've recognized through SA 2020 is that Harlandale is definitely one of those uh, urban districts that is on the move and headed in the r uh, headed in the right direction. Good morning. Uh, we just want to take a little time. I think a lot of us have seen each other's um, data, and I just want to uh, kind of go through it and em emphasize a few of the slides. Um, just a little bit, demographics. Um, we are located on the south side. Our, our enrollment is about 15,000, with 97% being Hispanic, and 88% of our population being free or reduced lunch. Our graduation rate, historically, we actually have been increasing. That is something that we do try to emphasize and make sure that we're, we are doing the right things for our kids. And in working with them, our, our counselors meet with every single high school student yearly. They start with their seniors at the beginning of the school year, making sure credit, check, credit checks, those types of things, and then uh, what we're going to start doing is start meeting with our juniors in the spring to make sure going into their senior year that they're on track and so that we're not losing them that last senior year. Students, students taking advanced courses. A lot of the data that, that you will see shared from all the districts, um, those of us who have been working together are based on AEIS, so you know that we're kind of behind a little bit, but we have been seeing an upward trend. We do offer AP classes and dual credit like everybody in the, in the, cla in the uh, meeting here today. Uh, we tend to see a lot of our kids going the dual credit route, but I have uh, principal, our principal and our lead counselor from Harlandale High School, and they've taken the lead of trying to emphasize AP more because we know that college board is one of the leading in making sure our, our kids are college ready. So they have taken the lead of trying to make their campus more AP oriented than dual credit. AP percentage uh, taken tests and passing, you can see we've had an upward trend. Um, from 10 to 11, you can see we, have a, we had a dramatic jump. And part of that was the uh, increase of the classes that we offered as far as AP. Um, as I said, Harlandale High School has been kind of the lead in wanting to offer AP. Uh, because of that increase, College Board, we were actually recognized on their honor roll for increasing the opportunities for kids and increasing the, uh, the number of kids scoring three and above. So we were actually kind of surprised with that too, but excited. <laughs> uh, dual credit percent receiving college credit. 
we've, we've had an increase in that. We have a, a very strong dual credit program. We work, we have kids that are going to Palo Alto, Northwest Vista, SAC, uh, St. Phillips. We have a very strong CTE program. We have kids who, um, as most people in here, can earn certifications in Microsoft, in uh, auto, culinary arts, cosmetology, medical assistant. Um, we're part of the academy, ITSA Academy, Aerospace Academy. So while I know that a, a lot of our emphasis is on college ready, we are also look at career ready also and giving those kids opportunities to earn those certifications so they can turn around and, be car and become part of the working community. SAT, ACT participation rate, we have had a slight increase, um, of course, nowhere near the state yet, and I'll, and I'll touch on this just in a few minutes. So this is what I really wanted to emphasize. So we knew that we did not uh, have a high participation rate. You're going to have those kids who know that they want to go to college who go and take the SAT or the ACT. So one of the things that we did this year is we partnered with College Board um, and said we really want to offer SAT on a school day. And so we were able to do that. Now, if you ask my counselors at that point, they really hated me because they were saying, you want, to, you want us to test how many? So what we did is we actually tested 95% of our seniors on SAT um, using the SAT school day. Now, we know that a result of that, our scores are not going to go up. We're not going to see an increase. But our goal was to expose our seniors to a college entrance exam. And so 95% of the kids took the test. That includes everybody. We even had some of our special ed kids. We know that they struggled through it, but it was about them seeing that type of exam. And uh, now after I asked the seniors, and Maria may change her, her mind, I said, okay, are we ready to do it again next year? Uh, and so she was like, oh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> So I said, well, how about testing this, the juniors in the spring of 2013? So that is kind of our goal is we want to test the juniors in the spring of 13, give them an opportunity. Uh, the district, we paid for it. And then their senior year, they get a second opportunity. So they're going into their senior year being able to see what an SAT looks like. Um, along with that, we feel that the PSAT gives us a great indication um, not only of what uh, SAT will look like, but it gives you a, they have what they call an AP indicator. It gives us an idea of what students that we're not touching that would qualify to become AP students. And um, it kind of gives you a projection of, of uh, threes or better. So we had 86% of our ninth grade through 11th grade take the PSAT. Now, mind you, all of this occurred on the same day. So every ninth or 11th grader was testing, and that's why the counselors don't like me so much. Um, and then uh, what we did is we actually, because being part of, uh, of the gear up, we tested 95% uh, of our eighth graders on the ready step, which is the college board. We kept trying to decide, do we want to go the ACT route or the college board route? And to be honest, college board for us, our liaison has been absolutely wonderful and has really guided us the whole way. We found out that there was a lot of data that College Board could share with you as far as uh, indicators of, of AP, kids being ready for college, and it's just been uh, much easier for us to really track our kids. So the goal for us is to continue to do this. Uh, now with that said, we need to do uh, and I'll go through this, SAT, ACT, we know our, our kids are not ready. We know the percentages are low. But again, I go back to we wanted them to really be able to see what does that test look like. Um, and so, apply Texas, which we talk about, but uh, FAFSA, as we know, is a challenge of the mayor, but the one thing that I really wanted to emphasize here was um, because we knew that our scores wouldn't increase just by giving the kids a test. We knew that we were lacking in how do we prepare our kids for an SAT? What does it look like? What does that uh, tutoring or you know something look like? So that's 
that's probably our biggest and uh, and the goal that we were em emphasized the most is imp the implementation of a study course or and the implementation of the spring SAT and ACT for juniors. Um, really, it's the, the study course. What does that look like? How can we help our kids really prepare? And then just kind of 80% of our ninth graders will be on track to graduate. And a lot of people say, well, why don't you put 100? Well, sure, we would all want 100%, but the reality is just with that, that's growing almost 9% for Harlandale. Um, and then 90% of uh, ninth to 11th graders will participate PSAT. We want to maintain and continue 95% of our 12th graders taking an SAT or ACT. 10% uh, will score three above. Uh, last year we were at a 7% scoring three or above. And then 25% 20, of our students will enroll in advanced courses. And last year we were at, I think it was like 22.3. So that's kind of hard on them. <laughs>